New York primary is just a few weeks away, and Donald Trump's home state could be in play, at least his opponents hope it is. But what does the head of the Empire State's Republican Party have to say about the Trump surge and all the Trump controversies? We'll ask him. He's here. Then the blame game over Donald Trump. Did the media create a monster? Our political panel will debate that. And also, even though the top two guys in the state legislature were just convicted of corruption, Governor Cuomo's new budget doesn't do a thing to tighten ethics rules. Has Albany learned anything from the Dean Skelos and Shelley Silver debacles? Hello and welcome to RFL. I'm Andrew Whitman in tonight for Richard French. Before we get to Rich's interview with Ed Cox, the head of the New York State Republican Party, wanted to give you an update on the shooting on Capitol Hill this afternoon. A guy with a gun tried to enter the visitor center at the Capitol complex, setting off the alarm. That caused Capitol Police to evacuate the place and put it and the White House on lockdown. Police shot the suspect before he could use his weapon. The unidentified suspect is now in the hospital. He has not yet been identified, but police say he was known to police since he's visited the Capitol before. They say it looks like he was acting alone and terror is not suspected. We will, of course, keep you posted. And with that, we pivot now to politics, presidential politics. New York's presidential primaries are set for April 19th. That's just three weeks from tomorrow. And for the first time in recent memory, our primaries will matter in both parties especially on the Republican side, where New York might be the best last chance to deflate Donald Trump's march to the GOP nomination. Only Wisconsin and Colorado are on the schedule before New York, so the Empire State may be where Republicans try to mount their last stand against the Donald. But right now, they have their work cut out for them. In the most recent poll, Trump leads Ted Cruz in the state 64 to 12. That is a huge lead this close to primary day. Perhaps the only bright spot for the anyone but Trump camp is coming from endorsements or the lack of them. Trump's two biggest New York backers are both from the Buffalo area. Carl Palladino, the party's 2010 Trump-esque gubernatorial nominee, and Congressman Chris Collins, whom Palladino supported, they are the only two noteworthy New York Trump endorsers. Trump will try to change minds the Thursday before the primary when he and Kasich attend the state GOP dinner in the city. But the state party changed its rules on delegates last year, so the state party will actually pick convention delegates, not the candidates themselves, and that could also hurt Trump. Speaking of the state party, earlier today, Rich spoke with the chairman of the New York State Republican Party, Ed Cox. Hey, you know, usually New York, by the time they get to New York in the primary process, it's an afterthought. A candidate's wrapped it up. Definitely not the case this time around. I'm curious. You've got a major dinner five days before the primary, um, and it's in less than three weeks from today. At that dinner, I know that um, both Kasich and uh, Trump are going to be in attendance, possibly even Cruz. Will you be uh, telling the assembled who you're going to be endorsing? Uh, well, uh, the endorsement's going to come five days later on our primary, and you're right. No one can remember the last time that New York grassroots Republicans really had a chance to be decisive in the selection of their nominee to be president of the United States. And finally, this is their moment. Three great candidates coming here. They've got uh, two good weeks after Wisconsin to really campaign hard. And we got our dinner right in the middle of that on April 14th. Ed, you mentioned you had three great candidates. That opinion is not shared by all. And I'm talking even among Republicans, even among uh, some of the more influential Republican electeds in this state. Peter King, uh, he said he may just leave politics altogether if Donald Trump's the nominee. He, of course, the Long Island congressman. And Chris Gibson, um, who is a popular New York uh, Republican congressman who everyone expects is going to be running for governor on the Republican ticket in a, in a couple of years' time. He's made it clear he doesn't believe Trump's got the temperament, um, and he being a retired colonel in the military, to be uh, the commander-in-chief here. You yourself, when we've sat down, have had reservations about Donald Trump. Are you prepared to call him a great candidate? Uh, all, look, they're, all three are doing very well. They've all got different attributes. Uh, Donald Trump actually has unearthed a basic problem of our politics, and that is we haven't been taking care of the sergeant in this country, the blue-collar workers, the people who obey the rules and work hard, and they're getting crushed by the global economy and, uh, and the, the sour economy created by the Obama administration in large part. And, uh, and they're worried about whether the United States is respected abroad or not. 
and uh, and really our party hasn't paid attention to the way they should and Donald Trump has has made it clear these are people whose frustrations and dreams and uh, and uh, and cares are some things that we should be on top of Ed we talked in the fall you and I uh, about Trump and at that point a lot of people weren't sure what he'd become I want to play a clip here um, on your thoughts of Trump uh, back then take a listen there's a certain portion of the population that likes the strength that he shows and likes generally what he what he what he's saying when it comes down to serious voting things can change at this four years ago at this time Michelle Bachman was uh, was up in in September guess who was up at 32 points more than Donald is now Governor Perry of Texas the point was Ed, back then and you were not alone a lot of people said late let the fever pass once people get a good look at this guy Trump they're not going to be as serious to that point you and I both don't think that anybody within reason says that we're going to bar an entire faith of people from coming in the country, that we're going to be able to round up 12 million illegals and we're going to have Mexicans pay for a wall on the border. Come on. In, in, never in your wildest dreams next fall did you, real last fall, did you think we'd be talking about this guy as the standard bearer for the grand old party here. Is it because you got to hold your nose to the possibility or do you really think he really is what Republicans, that he's the best and the brightest of your party. Well, Richard, you're, you're looking at the words. Uh, the uh, primary voters who are voting for him, and it's a large portion of our primary voters are looking at the man, say, you know, he's strong. This is a man who's been a good businessman. He, he can do a good deal. He will make America great again. And that is something that's very appealing in a very general way. He has been strong. He's dominated the primaries. He's dominated the debate stage in a way that uh, his predecessors, who we named back then, just could not do. He's had the strength to endure to this point. Now, going forward, he's going to have to step up his game. He's going to have to build out his campaign. He's going to have to reach out to other constituencies. And uh, that's when he's going to have to really prove himself, not just in the Republican Party, but also as a general election okay, candidate. Okay, fair enough, Ed, but you're talking about strategy, all legitimate points here, but I'm talking about the substance of them. And for folks who don't know, uh, your father-in-law, your late father-in-law, Richard Nixon, and taking Watergate to the side for a minute, nobody ever called him an unserious man, certainly with policy, with foreign policy, certainly with China, but people may not realize he created the EPA. He created OSHA, which protected workers' rights. He created the Equal Opportunity uh, Act. I can go down the line here. In a million years, do you ever think that if he looked at Donald Trump today and said he is the face of the Republican Party with some of the awful things that he has said, whether it be about people of gender, people of different faiths, uh, threatening rioting, I, I, I'm not going to spend a half an hour wasting your and my time, that this this is the new face of the Republican Party. I know people are angry, well, yeah. but you know, there's tons yeah, of Republican yeah. state leaders, not just yourself, but tons of leaders who said we can do a lot better than this guy. He's going to bring the whole party down. Oh, Richard, you're dealing with two different things. One, you're looking in retrospect at what Richard Nixon did after he was elected. Frankly, Donald Trump has a, the people who are really supporting him are what my father would have called a silent majority. A lot of that electorate is the same electorate who way back when, 60 years ago in 1968, supported him. And frankly, this, uh, this convention that's coming up is very much like that convention. You take a look at a conservative uh, uh, on the right, a solid conservative. You've got a sort of a populist who's appealing to the silent majority in the middle, and you've got a more moderate candidate who is saying, look, I can win according to the polls. That's the way I was in the middle of that uh, with the Nixon family then. I was dating Trish at the time in 1968. Observed the whole thing. Put aside the personalities, which are a lot of different, or very different, as you pointed out, the structure, political structure, is very much the same. Whether he's going to be successful or not is, is up to a question of his personality, what he's like, and what the circumstances are. I'll finally ask you, you obviously talk to more Republicans statewide than I do, but I've had both elected and people who are running as candidates, both as it relates for state legislature seats in the Assembly and Senate, as well as also congressional sitting, and also candidates running for some open seats, that have said that they are outright petrified who is at the top of the ticket and how that could have down ticket uh, implications for them. Specifically, they're worried that if Trump's the nominee in a blue state like New York, what that's going to mean for them in those moderate districts. 
you don't share any of their concerns? You think they're wrong not to be worried about if Trump's the nominee? There was a Siena poll about a month ago on Long Island that showed Donald Trump beat Mrs. Clinton. Uh, by about three percentage points. Uh, that's not going to hurt any, uh, any candidate down ballot on Long Island. I suspect it all depends. We've got a long way to go before the general election, but I'm just citing that poll as an example of uh, where Long Island's very contested now. It's not necessarily Republican, not necessarily Democrat in their congressional districts. And, uh, and if that's the, a poll now in the general election, it could very well be even better for down ballot for our candidates, regardless of who the candidate is. Okay, so we're going to bet you and I, steak dinner, that if Hillary and Trump are the nominees, even up, you don't want any odds, you think Donald Trump's going to beat Hillary Clinton in New York State. Is that what we're saying? Because I got a nice steakhouse uh, in mind. <laughs> no. Well, look, we don't know. If, in uh, fact, that's happening, we're winning in a landslide across the country. I'm just saying on Long Island, a recent Siena poll, that's a good poll, showed that Donald Trump would beat Mrs. Clinton on Long Island, and I think that could be very significant about the weakness of the Democrats because of this sour economy that we have and also the, uh, the lack of respect abroad for America. Well. God bless you, Ed, and uh, I, I wish you the best of luck. It'll be a very interesting dinner on the 14th and also a very interesting oh, I... evening on the 19th here. <laughs> but you can sell Trump all you want. I know down deep this is a nightmare not just for you but a whole ton of folks. How did we get? That the Apprentice is now going to be the nominee. Come on. Look, uh, look we are, uh, Richard, we're going to have a very exciting primary. Yeah. The grassroots uh, of the Republicans here in New York are going to have ex the time to select the next president of the United States. We're going to have an exciting convention and exciting general election. This is democracy at work in America. Uh, that's, that's one way to call it. Ed Cox, thank you so much. I appreciate it for you. Good to talk to you, Richard. And we're going to have an exciting debate. Up next, our political panel is here to talk about all things Trump, plus the Democratic race, which is heating up after Bernie Sanders swept the weekend, and of course, the pivotal New York primary.